What's up guys, Max Maxworks here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys kind of a uh, chronicled version of how we put together the LPG or propane system in the box truck. So firstly, I want to talk about kind of what's involved in doing this, and so if you want to cut straight to the money, out, money shots, um, I'll put a link somewhere over here that you can jump forward in the video. But this next couple of minutes is just going to be kind of instructional. Uh, to let you know um, why I chose what I chose, how we did everything, and kind of some of the parts that you're going to need. Now, the boilerplate disclaimer. Um, propane blows up, and I am not a gas expert, professional installer, none of these things. This video is not meant to be instructional. It's simply meant to document the process we went through to do this um, so that other people can pull their own ideas. So, that said, Please, please, please be very, very careful. Uh, propane is super energy dense. It makes a hell of a good bomb. And so you really don't want to be fucking around with it unless you're very confident in what you're doing. This is actually going to be my first time ever running any sort of gas line. So even I'm a little nervous. But uh, hopefully I did all the prep work and it's going to be a pretty straightforward installation. So if we think about it systematically, we have to start with our source. That is this right here you see on the corner of your screen. This is a Flame King YSN 122 tank. For my application, I wanted a tank that mounted underneath the chassis, which meant I needed a horizontal. Um, since uh, general appliances use propane vapor rather than liquid propane, I needed uh, a tank that would provide propane vapor. Uh, for instance, your standard grill tank um, has to be vertical to provide vapor. They fill it with liquid, patrol, uh, uh, liquid propane because obviously when a gas is compressed, it becomes a liquid. Um, and the very top of that tank is filled with vapor that's basically gassing off from the liquid. Um, and the valve at the top of that tank that feeds your barbecue grill pulls that vapor out. I needed, and if you turn it horizontally, obviously, then liquid will flow out of your valve and that's no good. So I needed a special tank um, that has a horizontal valve in it to allow you to keep the tank horizontal but pull out only vapor. Um, and so I bought this. It was around $250, the best price by far. Um, they are like double that on eBay and other places, but Amazon was where we got. This one is brand new. Um, I splurged a little bit because I wanted something that uh, was horizontal, is ASME and DOT certified, and what that means is this tank, once it's mounted, will never have to be removed. It, will, it can be refilled with propane on the vehicle. A lot of the RV style tanks or the barbecue grill style tanks have to be removed from the vehicle by law, at least here in Texas, to be filled. This is rated to be bolted onto the vehicle and be part of the vehicle and stay there. And uh, on the front of it, it's got a separate valve for filling and for connecting uh, like your sources. Uh, so that is our source um, for the mount. As you'll see, I had to build these uh, little quarter inch plates to help offset the mount underneath. But other than that, this is straight out of the box as delivered and it should work. Now, in front of me, you'll see a myriad of stuff. Uh, basically, to connect the propane tank to our um, things that we need to hook up, like a hot water heater and the oven, um, we're going to use this stuff. This is CSST, Corrugated Stainless Steel Tubing. Um, it was invented by the Japanese uh, when they got tired of their houses blowing up every time there's an earthquake. Traditionally, gas is run in black iron pipe. Uh, it's handy, it's cheap, you can cut it down and thread it for any length you want. Unfortunately, black iron pipe is brittle and it rusts. And so I didn't want to use it for this project. So we spent a little bit more money and got this. Um, it requires a little bit of uh, knowledge to be able to use this stuff and it's not super commonly available. I actually had to order all this stuff from Lowe's online because the local stores didn't really carry it. Um, so ProFlex, which is the name brand of this stuff, also sells for two bucks a book that teaches you and makes you a certified ProFlex installer. I got the book, it's not on the table, but I read through it. It's really good, it just shows you how to do everything. So let me talk about some of the fittings and some of the stuff you need. Um, I had to buy this, this is a Lennox uh, tube cutter. You need this to cut the CSST. Um, we got a bunch of these. These are uh, little brackets, little steel brackets for uh, conduit. We're going to use these to attach it. Now for each appliance, you're going to want one of these. This is a one half inch uh, gas valve. Do not use water valves. They are not the same thing. These have a special lockout and special 
um, Delrin or uh, UHME inch search or something. And these are specifically for gas. Um, we got several T's uh, because we're gonna have to split it off to feed all three of our sources. And for the CSST, we have these. These are called termination plates. And basically what happens is um, this is forward towards the appliance. You unscrew this part and the tubing fits back here. And then you can bolt this to the floor or bolt it to the wall. Um, and this is basically your outlet for your uh, appliances. Also, I bought several of these kits. Uh, they're about 30 bucks. They're called the Brass Craft uh, kits for hooking up appliances. This will be basically the final run, so from the termination plate to the actual appliance. Oh, and um, obviously for all your connections, you can either use uh, pipe dope or you can use this stuff. Um, it's basically a special Teflon tape. It's a little thicker, it's specifically for gas connections. Um, so that kind of covers all of the basics. Uh, and so now you guys can watch us as we kind of install all of this. Um, at this point, I really don't know how it's gonna go. I'm very optimistic, it seems like a pretty straightforward system and uh, hopefully all that works out and you're going to see this right now in this video um, and so this video will cover the entirety of our gas installation. I want to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. Alright, so have our BOT tank mounted, built these, obviously not tighten this, is just quarter inch plate steel um, to make it line up with the ribs that are underneath the box. So here we got our first uh, strike plate fitting inserted as well as a ball valve on it. Um, and CSST is running at the bottom. So we're gonna go down there and run it to the tank. So this is where the termination point for the stove is. It runs down and then we have this protective sleeve on it. Um, basically just clamps that hold it in place. There's a T right here that runs all the way across for the other two appliances and then we'll run back to the tank. So to install this fitting, which is gonna to go to the hot water heater, we're basically using an inch and one eighth uh, hole saw, punch a hole through the floor, and then uh, that gives you enough space for this to sit flush, and then just attach it with some uh, construction screws. So there we go, we have all three fittings installed, they're all plumbed underneath. And at this point, I just need to find the right adapter for the main RV tank, and then we can hook the rest of the system up. All right, so what we have right here is this is a pressure regulator. Um, and then this fitting didn't come with it. This is a 3 8 inch NPT to 1 half inch NPT adapter. And so if you look carefully, if I open it, that part's done. Now we just got to hook it up to the rest of the system. Well, I'd use the gas check thingy. Um, I guess I can show you guys that. I got this off eBay for like 10 bucks. Works great. And as you can see, we are kicking the tires and lighting the fires. And all of our burners work. We turn that to low or back to off. There we go, turn everything off. This just got one of these like striker things on it. Checked it out, we got gas coming out of all three lines. Crawled around underneath with the gas check valve. Made sure uh, we had no leaks anywhere. So that's cool. Um, we can button up the uh, stove and then basically just figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna build this cabinet here because all these cabinets have to be built. But let's do that and then we can make sure there's no nothing residual. I guess there isn't, I don't know. Make sure there's nothing residual. So just like that, I think we can officially say that all of the gas stuff uh, is plumbed in here. Now, I don't think this kit is gonna be long enough uh, to do this connection right here. Um, so I'm probably gonna return the other kit and then just uh, buy two more um, of the female valves and uh, basically just make it out of CSST that we have because I had to use some of the roll um, to finish the, the second, the second roll to finish the underside. So anyway, that's pretty much it for the gas. As you guys can see, it wasn't it wasn't too, too bad. If you wanna keep following the build, make sure to follow Maxworks on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat. I think that's it, I think they got the big ones. Um, as always, I'm Max, this is Maxworks. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like this series, please subscribe. Make sure you check out 
the other box truck videos. If you want to comment on something on social media, use hashtag the base box. It'll find its way to me. And thanks for watching. Peace.